If y equals 20x minus 86 and y equals 14, what is the value of x? Is it a, b, c, d, or is it e? So now is your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so basically here, there are a couple different ways to look at this question here. And what I think is the easiest way to do it is to start by taking this 14 and substituting it into the equation for y. All right, so what I mean by that is I'm going to rewrite this, and instead of writing y, I'm just going to write 14. And the reason that I want to do that is because it tells me that y equals 14. And now what I want to do is I want to get x by itself. All right, so whenever you get a question that says, what is the value of x or solve for x, anything like that, all that really means is that you want to get the x by itself on one side of the equation. So since I have 20x minus 86, I'm going to start by adding 86, okay, to both sides of the equation. Now, when I do that, what we see is that the 86s cancel out on the right-hand side. And I have to add 86 over here as well, because whatever I do to one side of the equation, I also have to do it to the other. So I'll have 100 equals 20x. Now, if you're wondering where the 100 came from, that's because 14 plus 86 is 100. So I have 100 equals 20x. So 20x is really 20 times x. And in order to get rid of this 20 and get the x by itself, I want to do the opposite of times, which is division, or to divide. So if I divide by 20 on this side, the 20s cancel out, and I'm left with just x. But whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other side as well. And so I do 100 divided by 20, and that gives me 5. So the answer here is 5, and like I said, there are several ways to do this question, so if you had a different way, let me know down below. And also, I'm going to show the written solution that I typed out for you on the screen. You can pause the video and study this if you want to. If not, that's fine too, and we'll keep moving. 1 times 10 to the negative 5 equals which of the following? A, B, C, D, or E. So now is your chance, if you'd like to, to pause the video, try to figure this out. And if you get stuck, don't worry, because we're just going to go over the answer. Okay, so for questions like this, here's a trick that you can use. So first, what I like to do is just take the number that is right here, and I'm just going to write it down, so that number is 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the 10 to the negative 5, and I'm just going to look at this number right here, which is 5. Now, I'm just going to ignore that there's a negative sign here and just focus on the 5, and I'm going to subtract 1 from it. So 5 minus 1 is 4. So then I'm going to put a decimal, put four zeros in. One, two, three, four. And that's all you have to do here. Uh, the correct answer is D. So I know I went over this kind of fast, and there's other ways to look at questions like this. So I'm going to throw the written solution that I typed out here on the screen for you. You can take all the time you need to study this. This video's champion shoutout goes to a test taker who I'm really excited to announce just passed math and says, I passed my final test today. It was math and I passed my GED. Everyone, I don't care who you are, you can make your dreams come true. So congratulations to the test taker. If James bought 20 bagels and three fourths of them were plain while the rest were all cinnamon, how many cinnamon bagels did he buy? Is the answer A, B, C, D, or E? So now's your chance to pause the video, try to figure this out, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so one way to think about this is that James has 20 bagels total, and the, the number of bagels he has, right, it's going to be the sum of the cinnamon bagels and the plain bagels. All right, so the number of cinnamon bagels plus the number of plain bagels has to equal 20 here. Now, fortunately, we can figure out pretty easily the exact number of plain bagels because we know that there are 20 total and three-fourths of them were plain. So what I would do is I would do 20 times 3 over 4. All right, and if you just do this in your calculator, what you will see is that 20 times 3 over 4 equals 15. So we know that P equals 15. So I can rewrite this as 20 equals C plus 15. So at this point, it's just a matter of solving for C. 
So C plus 15. Well, to get that C alone, I want to get rid of the 15. So I'm going to have to do the opposite of addition, which is subtraction. And whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other side as well. So if I do 20 minus 15, I'll see that 5 equals C. And the correct answer here is C. So let me put the written solution that I typed out for you up on the screen. You can pause the video and study this if you'd like to. If not, then we'll go on to the next question. So this next question is the champion's challenge question for the video. If the volume of a cylinder is 250 cubic centimeters and the height is 10 centimeters, what is the length of the radius? Is it A, B, C, or D? Now, two things to note here. One is that for your test, you're going to want to memorize that pi is 3.14. Um, it's not really equal to 3.14, but uh, it's close enough. So pi is approximately 3.14. So you will want to know this for your test for doing calculations. Um, but this formula here will be given to you on your test. This is V equals pi r squared h. And on your test, just know that you would want to go to the formula sheet that they'll give you, and you'd want to find the formula for a volume for the volume of a cylinder. Um, you won't have to memorize this formula. I'm just giving this to you to save your time. Uh, but this you will have to memorize for the test. All right, so let me turn it over to you to pause the video. This is kind of a tricky question, so take all the time you need with it, and whenever you're ready, we'll go over the answer. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do here is just take the information that I'm given and I'm going to start plugging it into the volume formula. So we're told that the volume of a cylinder is 250. So what I'm going to do is take 250 and plug it into the formula for V. And I'm going to do the same with H. All right, so H is the height and we're told that the height is 10. So I'm going to take this 10 and I'm going to plug it into the formula for H. So I now have 250 equals pi r squared times 10. And the name of the game here is to find the length of the radius. So we want to get r by itself on one side of the equation. So one way to do this would be let's do, let's divide by 10 and divide by pi. So let's divide by 10 pi. And if I do that, the pi and the 10 are going to cancel out of the right hand side. But whatever I do to one side, I also have to do it to the other side. So I have 250 divided by 10 pi. So let me do 250 divided by 10. 250 divided by 10 is 25. And for right now, I'm just going to leave uh, pi written as a symbol. All right. So at any point in this calculation, you can take 3.14 and plug it in for pi. But I usually like to just do the calculation all the way as far as I can, and then I like to put 3.14 in at the final step. But it's up to you how you want to do that. So I have 25 over pi equals r squared. And if you got this far, then you did a really, really good job by getting this far, all right? But there's another step we have to take here because we want to find the length of the radius. We want to find r. And right now we have r squared, which isn't what we want. So in this situation right here, uh, what we need to do is take the square root of both sides of the equation. And the reason I do this is because the square root of, of r squared is just r, which is what I want. So really what you could do is just take the square root of 25 over pi, plug that into your calculator, and you might want to do square root of 25 over 3.14 instead of pi. doesn't really matter, but the end result that you should get will be 2.82 equals r. All right, so when all is said and done here, you'll get 2.82 as r. And you'll just, like I said, at this step here, you just want to use your calculator, carefully plug this in, square root of 25 over pi. That's going to give you the right answer here. All right, so A is the correct answer.